Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Mouse FPV. Um, so uh, it's really quick before the video starts. This is going to be a little bit long-winded. Um, so I will have timestamps down below. Um, but today's video is about greasing our quad frames. This idea came from Chris Rosser. Uh, he is the super smart sciencey guy that's been talking about um, different frame resonance modes and testing different frames. Um, he's got some cool motor testing videos and prop like prop testing prop choice videos, um, and sort of all the science behind these things, uh, and sort of sort of you know demystifies these like oh this feels good this looks good um, and his channel will be linked down below in the description. Um, he had the suggestion to use NioGel. Um, it's this um, dampening grease. It is seven six seven A um, between where our carbon sort of plates meet up on our frames uh, to dampen, or dampen? Yeah, to dampen uh, frame resonance. So uh, previously, Kebab FPV, Bob Rugi, suggested that I put electrical tape between where my arms mount to the main plate, um, and it worked wonders. I was having really bad frame resonance at 440-ish hertz, uh, and that pretty much took care of it. Still in some problems, um, it definitely wasn't perfect. Um, so uh, today we do one flight, uh, just a quick flight, um, where I do a couple of flips, a couple of rolls, I do a throttle sweep, and then a few prop wash moves, like really hard turns, then settling into my own wake. Um, and I try to keep it like consistent between both. It's not perfect, but it's, I guess, close enough for this test. Um, and so, uh, yeah, my overall impressions with the NioGel, um, it's a mess. It's like, so, though I don't know if you can tell, like, the way this frame is sort of constructed, um, but there are, it's like a lot of nooks and crannies, and so when you put the grease on the, like, arms, um, it sort of, like, oozes out a little bit, and then you gotta get in all these tight areas with, like, a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol, and then... Like I use a, a toothbrush and the toothbrush is covered in NioGel now and that's getting everywhere and it was just like a slimy, greasy mess. I feel like for most people it's probably not gonna be worth it. If you're in a situation like me where you're having like actual problems, um, probably worth it. If you're in a situation where um, like, hey, I was able to remove one low pass filter but not two and I really want to, um, you're probably better off doing something like what Bob Ruge's coming up with, where he takes another really thin piece of carbon, um, and you put tape on that sheet of carbon, and then you put that in. Um, and the issue that that solves is if you just do the electrical tape, if you just try and change out one arm, where you just kind of remove two screws, you slide it out. The reason that works is because carbon slides on carbon like relatively easily. It just slides out. It's smooth. It's like rigid. Um, the tape is kind of gummy, right? So when you go to put the, the arm back in, it kind of snags the tape. Um, and so the sandwich layer of carbon will help with that. Um, that's probably gonna be the easiest long-term solution. That's gonna be the best for most people. I think this NioGel is gonna be more of an extreme um, extreme case. Um, and you can even, maybe you can see, maybe you can't. Like in this, I've already got dirt and gunk sticking to the gel I couldn't get off. Um, the gel, I think, works better, um, but I also put it in more places. I put it underneath uh, where the motors mount up uh, to the carbon. Um, all of my motor screws on the bottoms of the heads have it so that the screws aren't rubbing directly on the carbon. Um, it's on the tops and bottoms of all my standoffs. Um, it's on the like camera cage plates. So where these, this is like a puzzle assembly here and where all the pieces of the puzzle meet, there's some NioGel in there. Um, it's on the tops and the bottoms of the arms for both plates. Um, it's up top, it's underneath the GoPro, but the top plate kind of locks in to the camera plates. Um, so in all of that assembly, I've got NioGel. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm probably saying this wrong. NioGel, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It, uh, it works, it's just a damn mess. <laughs> so anyway, enough of me talking. Um, I will cut over to my two flights back to back um, and then just a little section of some black box uh, reviews. Um, 
I don't have a ton of things to say about the black box data. Um, it's different, but it's hard to tell which is better and which is worse. I will say the NioGel felt like it flew better, but then we're getting into this whole like, oh, you know, what feels better? Um, but even looking at the videos, it does look, well, you know what? I will let you guys figure that out for yourselves. So um, you can see there. Anyway, um, I really, really appreciate you guys viewing. Um, again, definitely check out Chris Rosser's channel. I believe he's going to be doing um, a much more scientific video on this stuff um, and maybe some uh, good tips and tricks to apply it that maybe I didn't think of um, that will make the application easier and make it more viable for us to use. Um, in the meantime, uh, here's what I got. All right, so I just got my tube of uh, NioGel in and uh, I currently have a layer of tape uh, which I'll try and show in the video, but I've got a layer of tape in between the main plate uh, and the arms um, Like where the arms mount to the main plate um, And then we're gonna take that out and we're gonna put NioGel everywhere um, So we'll try and do really really similar flights. I'm thinking um, I'll do a throttle sweep I'll do two moves in each direction. So like roll left roll right pitch forward pitch back um, and then I'll do two like prop wash turns um, into like prop wash settles um, come in land. Then I'll do the same thing after. Obviously that's not the perfectly like good scientific test, but I mean that's as good as we're gonna get, right? So yeah, let's do it. So it is warm and cloudy. It feels like it's gonna rain. But I put the Nigel on, Niogel, and it's strange. So these motors are pretty new. Um, and so they still have smooth bearings. And when you kind of spin the prop, before as the it was smooth, but as the as the kind of magnets slowed the prop down, if you just spin it by hand, there was kind of like a like a whoosh. And uh, it's kind of, it's kind of, it was just, it's just like a noise, like a, like a vibration. And it was always pretty noticeable, and you could feel it through the frame. And now when you spin, I can't feel it in the frame nearly as much. So we'll, we'll see. But so I've got the gel under the motors, on every motor screw, like where, uh, where the screw head meets the carbon. I've got it on the on like the, the sandwich base plate where that touches the arms and then where the arms touch the main plate um, in all the camera front end assembly in this quad they kind of it's kind of like a puzzle and so in every carbon touching surface got a little bit in there along with the standoffs uh, in the whole camera assembly here um, as well as the standoffs throughout the body of the frame just at the top and bottom where the standoffs meet the frame um, and I think that's everywhere I put it yeah, so we'll see how it goes.
there was like no prop wash there. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Motors are cold. Yeah, we'll see how the logs turn out. It felt fine. Didn't feel worse, that's for sure. So now we'll just go over a couple of uh, small things with these logs. Um, again, I don't have a ton. I don't really have a ton to say about them, to be honest. Maybe you guys can be a better judge. <clears throat> so you can see my two flights here. I already have them loaded into PID toolbox. See, they're extremely similar. Um, actually, like, crazy similar. Down to, they are the same amount of time. Um, so that was kind of crazy. <laughs> like, I lined everything up pretty good. Um, but it, it's not perfect. So um, anyway, over in the spectral analyzer, on the left-hand side um, is the pre-gyro for um, Ansari. So file A is with tape. File B is with grease. Um, and so over here you have tape. Over here you have grease. Um, so columns one and three are going to be the pre-filter, and two and four are the post-filter. And so, um, oh, also, I'm this is on my MacBook, so I don't know how the audio is going to be. I do apologize. Um, so you can see they're pretty similar. Um, when I had uh, gone from no tape to tape as a quick refresher on pitch, um, there was a straight-up mountain coming through. Um, like 440 hertz so this little wave um, here was straight up it, it almost had the same amplitude as this as this first peak and so um, yeah that, that that's like that's just how that was um, and so you can see going from um, tape to the uh, the old goo uh, <laughs> it's or the uh, the grease rather um, that got eliminated even more, like it's like gone, gone. Um, I've also got a static notch, right? I mean, like it, it does get crushed out. You can see here, there's this little dip. Um, I have a notch filter that sort of annihilates that the rest of the way. Um, but regardless, um, you know, it does look like it knocked it out a little bit more, um, which is cool. Um, also there's some funny business going on up here at like 600 Hertz, um, on all on all axes that um, this is the post filter data that was kind of squeaking through and then actually up here at like eight I, I, this little tooltip thing is super annoying I don't know how to get rid of it um, but right here at 800 Hertz there's another one um, especially on pitch um, and so those aren't coming through as strongly over uh, on the on the uh, the grease side you can see they're kind of not there um, so that's nice um, at the same time, uh, pitch has got this little extra hitch in it. Um, overall, it seems like with the grease, everything is tighter and sort of less dispersed. So if we're looking like this um, on roll, um, it takes up like a wider band, and that's been kind of condensed um, with the grease. Um, also, the amplitude on yaw of the motor noise is lower. Um, so, you know, that's fine. <laughs> um, the other thing I noticed too was on like roll, for example, this like prop washy determ oscillation, um, sort of gets moved forward instead of being at like 60 Hertz. Um, now it's over at like 80. Is that good or bad? I don't know. You know, it's fine or whatever. Um, if we look at the 3D models, um, we can kind of see the same thing um, where, uh, yeah, like actually if we go down to a, under 100 hertz, that's kind of what I was looking for. Um, so under 100 hertz, you can kind of see like um, before, like uh, the sort of the width of this, this is kind of almost two bands wide and it kind of gets crushed up into one. Is that better? Is that worse? I, I don't really know. <laughs> um, it seems like the same amount of noise is there. It's just kind of getting grouped. Um, or even like the width of this band is narrower, um, but also just more dense. I don't know necessarily, know, like is that a ton better? Um, and, uh, or even like this, um, this like prop wash, up at like 60 hertz um, kind of goes away and gets kind of dispersed it gets brought down 
into like the 30 hertz range, like here. That's, those aren't the same graph, but it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. Um, and then it sort of gets pushed up from like 60 to 80, we can see. Um, and then also kind of more focus on the low end. So is it better? Um, I guess you tell me. <laughs> um, ow. I think it flew better. Um, sorry, I set my elbow. Uh, I think it flew better. Uh, seemed to have less prop wash. Um, but yeah, uh, that is that. It, those 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 are the results. Um, and even here, right? So on pitch, um, this is sort of spread out everywhere, and it gets sort of sort of grouped down. Yeah. So that is the results. Um, I hope you guys. I don't know, maybe learn something from the video, um, or maybe change your opinion on whether or not you want to try this grease. Um, now that this quad is greased up, I think I'm going to kind of keep it that way. Um, but in the future, on builds, I'm not sure I'll use that Nile gel. I think I'll probably, probably just put tape um, in the frame, or I guess it depends on the frame. I'll probably not put anything in the frames when I build them. And then if I have issues, I'll add stuff. Um, so yeah. Uh, go ahead and uh, sound off in the comments whether or not uh, you might try the Nile gel or whether or not you were if you're still going to um, and what you thought of the flights if you thought one was smoother than the other um, and once again definitely check out Chris's video stay tuned I'm sure uh, he will be posting something soon I know he mentioned in a short which is where I got this idea from that he will be making a full video soon so um, I'm sure his will be more comprehensive than this um, but maybe this is just sort of a, sort of an outside data point um, of maybe some real world use uh, and this will be useful to somebody. So I really appreciate it guys. Uh, have a great day and uh, happy flying.